The initial shock of finding out you have cancer almost feels like an out-of-body experience. Like you're watching things unfold right before your eyes and there's nothing you can do about it. And if we're being honest, it's quite easy to allow this feeling or this mindset to take hold of the rest of your cancer journey. Now, what if I told you that this sense of uncertainty or loss of control is something that you can manage? It's been said that life is a series of choices. And when it comes to cancer diagnosis, those choices can take on profound significance. So today, I want to share with you how the choices we make, both big and small, can significantly impact our journey through cancer and that even in the face of such a formidable adversity, we are never without choices that empowers us. Hello, I am your life doula Charity Marohomsar and I'm here to offer insight and perspective in navigating the complexities of cancer end-of-life transitions, and grief. Allow me to guide you in embracing the beauty and strength found within some of life's most challenging moments. You do not have to go through this alone. I'm a stage four cancer survivor turned cancer coach who found my calling when I was undergoing my own treatment. I prayed for faith over fear, shifted my focus from my personal hardships to helping others, and directed my energy to heal from inside out. Since then, I have held space for countless individuals and their loved ones as we journeyed together and exploring the emotional territories of this profound human experiences. I am an open book. I welcome hard conversations, cancer, healing, death, dying, grief, loss, all are topics we discuss here. So I invite you to make yourself comfortable. Make yourself a cup of coffee, tea, and just open yourself to possibilities. I believe that through understanding and connection and support, we can find solace, growth, and renewal in the face of adversity. Welcome to the Life Doula Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's begin. We'll start with the day that changed everything. So you've just received this life-altering news that you have cancer. The world suddenly looks different. It's easy to feel helpless, overwhelmed, uncertain about the future. But here's the beautiful truth. While the circumstances may be beyond our control, the choices we make are not. For context, when I received my diagnosis in January of 2016, I felt like everything I had worked so hard for in my life just fade in the background. I was at the peak of my corporate career, earning seven to eight figures, living the dream of providing my family with a comfortable life, with a job that I loved and I was very good at, this was quite an achievement for someone who grew up from very humble means in the province of Camarines Sur. To me, that was really the point where I thought I had made it. But God had other plans. 
and I found myself standing at this crossroad of making my first choice. How do I want to approach my diagnosis? I was in my surgeon's clinic and my mind was racing a million miles a minute. And no matter how much I wanted to change the outcome or wish for different results, I knew it was ultimately out of my hands. I stopped bargaining with God for a lower stage and instead I prayed for faith to replace all my fears. It was the first of many answered prayers. I consider myself so blessed to have been paired with an oncologist who has the gift of delivering a bad diagnosis with so much warmth and grace and compassion. Because finding out you have cancer is a feeling of paralysis unlike anything else. And I mean, nothing crushes the human spirit like feeling completely and utterly helpless, agonizing over the idea that you are about to leave this earth with hopes and dreams unfulfilled seems like unnecessary, but looking back, it was all so natural. And human response to the situation I found myself in. I was diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer, bone metastasis. For several months, the pain of lying down was so excruciating, I had to sleep sitting on the floor with my head resting at the edge of my bed. The physical pain at its worst could have easily caused me to be bitter. But not once did I ask the Lord, why? Instead, I asked him, what? What did he want me to take from all of this? And what was I to do with all of this? Surely God didn't allow this to happen just to make me suffer. I was sure there was more to this than just pain. Before then, I've never really considered myself religious. But my relationship with my father deepened during my cancer journey. I believed he was more real and present in my life. I anchored my faith in him. I wholeheartedly feel that he carried me through the toughest days of my life. You see, we can choose to be a victim, to allow the fear and despair to take over, or we can choose to be a warrior, a survivor determined to fight with everything we have. It is so important to remind ourselves that even when circumstances are very tough, we have the choice to rise above all of it. My treatment required about six to eight hours of chemo every single week, and there was never guarantee that I would even see the end of it or how long I would have to take it. To say the side effects were unbearable would be an absolute understatement. And the choice of treatment is at a crucial one. And it might be one of the most challenging. We have options. We have the right to explore and understand each one. We can choose the path that feels right for us, but it always has to align with what's important, our values and priorities. It's a choice that demands careful consideration. And if, might, if I may say, choose and pray about it. But it is ultimately in your hands. You get to have a say 
in your back. This act of empowerment really instills a sense of control. In what might seem to be like a chaotic, uncontrollable situation, we can choose doctors who resonate with our values, who listens with compassion, who understands how we feel and our needs, who are willing to explore var various treatment options. It is, after all, your body, your life, your journey, and your choices should be honored. We have to be aware that the choices available to us are more than just medical alternatives. They're reflections of our values, our hopes, and our priorities. Some of us will opt for aggressive treatments willing to endure the physical and emotional toll that we want for a longer life, while others might prioritize quality over quantity of life, choosing palliative care and prolongation that emphasizes comfort and minimizing suffering. We have to be able to honor these choices and acknowledge that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. You see, beyond the clinical decisions, I always had to think of how do I want to view my life as I go through my cancer journey. At the end of the day, it isn't just a physical battle. It's a psychological, emotional, and if I may mention, spiritual one as well. So I made a choice to view it as an opportunity for personal growth, to be able to help and encourage others and deepen my own relationships. You see, the magnitude of my daily struggle as I'm sure you can imagine, really prompted me to delve deep into the spiritual, emotional, and mental aspects of dealing with cancer. I filled my days with activities that brought joy and meaning, recognizing that healing extended beyond just this physical body. My mindset became my foundation, where negative thoughts had zero place in my mind. I decided to shift my perspective on chemotherapy, choosing to really embrace it as an opportunity to heal. And this has changed the way I experience my treatment, even the side effects. I recall that I used to hate Fridays. But I started calling it Healing Fridays. I turned to gratitude and began eagerly and almost anticipating my chemo session. You will not believe it. I was grateful that my blood stats were good enough so I could receive treatment and that my body was able to accept it. I was probably the only patient with a pep in my step, practically running to my room, excited to welcome the chemo because every treatment meant I was one step closer to getting better. And even when I lost my hair completely, I chose to envision a future filled with so much happiness and purpose. Knowing that there was no end date to my chemotherapy, I had to ask myself, how do you want to go through this journey? In that pivotal moment, I again chose to make the most out of it, visualizing the state I wanted to be in. I only saw images of myself really happy, laughing. I saw myself busy with work, doing everyday things with my kids, and continuing with something that I start, my charity work. 
That was my vision. It was from the perspective that life indeed will continue to go on. I decided against wearing wigs because they didn't appeal to me. Instead, you know, I found a good reason to f buy lovely earrings to pair with my bald hair, carefully choosing vibrant clothes of my outfits and um, picked out beautiful hats and head scarves. It was important to me not to get those stares. You know, these pitiful looks from strangers. Part of my self-care was refusing to tolerate the energy of pity or despair and ensuring happiness surrounded me. A lot of times I would walk in the elevator and people will stare at me and I would intentionally tell them, I am okay. That's how much I wanted my energy to be up. Perhaps one of the most profound choices we have in this journey is the relationship women take. I made sure my intentions were clear. I purposely and carefully chose to surround myself with a support network that always uplifted and empowered me. I was extremely mindful of my physical space and I only immersed myself in uplifting and inspirational things. Even the movies I watched, I never watched anything sad. I even went as far as to ask people to literally leave my room when they began to cry for me. Please choose to share your journey with loved ones who provide you the strength that you need. I cannot even begin to emphasize how important this is. I really implore you to seek and understand what your personal experience is trying to teach you. There is a purpose behind every encounter. It's an exchange of energy and I'd like to believe that it is what brings me here to you at this very moment. We all have our own stories, background, support system, and an individual perspective on what our healing journey should look like. By considering a range of options, we are empowered to be active participants in our own healing journey. We are granted autonomy and we allow our voices to be heard. The choice to be informed is yours. Knowledge is so powerful. You can choose to educate yourself about your condition, your treatment options, and potential side effects. We are even allowed, and I will encourage you to ask questions and make informed decisions based on all of this that you have learned alongside with your medical team. As you dive deeper into your cancer journey, you'll soon come to understand that the power to choose is not just about prolonging life. It's about enhancing its quality. It's about enabling ourselves to cherish moments with loved ones, fulfill your personal goals, and find comfort in your decisions. Healing is an art that encompasses the mind, the spirit, and the body. You see, it takes great courage and immense fortitude to accept there's only so much that we can do. You see, an option I would very much like for you to take time to think about, and I mean really think about, is allowing to let life play out. Give yourself the chance to have the last say and find beauty and meaning 
in what life there may be left. Whether it's weeks, months, years, or even decades, you will find it given the opportunity. It is there. You have the capacity to make the difference for yourself. Your choices matter. Your life matter. You matter. I urge you to reconnect with the person behind the diagnosis. Remember who you are. The power of choice lies in your hands. By embracing this power, you transform your whole experience into a sanctuary of hope resilience, and compassion. It is a remarkable gift. It may not always be easy, and at times you may feel overwhelmed. But know this, each choice you make is a step towards healing, towards reclaiming control over your life, and towards embracing the hope that you can overcome this challenge. If you are listening right now, allow me to leave you with this. Life can be challenging and a cancer diagnosis can feel like an insurmountable mountain. But remember, it is your mountain to climb. And the choices you make along the way are your tools for the journey embrace them, own them, and know that with each choice, you are writing your story of courage and resilience. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Life Doula podcast. If you or someone you know is battling with cancer, remember, you have the power of choice. I'm here to support you on this journey to remind you that you're never alone, heal strong, stay hopeful, and never underestimate the incredible strength that lies within you.